Meet Dr. Angelo Lambris, one of the few people in the world who performs intricate surgery on reptiles and amphibians. Dr. Lambris treats both wild animals and exotic pets, never turning anyone away and doing whatever he can to save lives. There aren't many people in the world who can claim they've operated on crocodiles, tortoises and snakes. But from this small clinic at his home in Durban, KwaZulu-Natal, Dr. Angelo Lambaris has done all that and more. Well, I've been doing reptile surgery now for just over 50 years. As far as I know, I'm the only person in this country who focuses specifically on reptiles and amphibians. Ever since I can remember, I've had a passionate interest in both medicine and in reptiles and amphibians and I don't think there was ever any time when I wasn't quite certain that I wanted to study both of those subjects. Reptiles have had a raw deal. They're misunderstood. They're not often looked after very well and it sort of developed in a very inevitable way as my knowledge and skills grew, so the procedures also evolved. Today's clinic patient has big problems. This is an adult male Bosque's or Savannah monitor. He hasn't passed any stools for a bit over three weeks. He's grossly overweight. In fact, I've never seen a more overweight lizard than this in 50 years of clinical practice. So he, that's something of a record. There appears to be an intestinal obstruction about here, deep down in the gut. It doesn't actually show up on x-ray. Here's the pelvis and the hind legs. Here's the spine. Um, here we have intestine, which is filled with a lot of unabsorbed food that haven't been able to pass through. The bulge that we can feel as a hard mass doesn't show up on the x-ray but it's in this area here and you can actually make out a bit of a bump. Really, um, I think the problem lies more with the owner than with the animal. If one could train the owner to cut back on the amount of food offered, then I think the problem would clear up like magic. I'm going to be using an anaesthetic called ketamine. Dr. Lambris explains that anaesthetic doesn't work quite the same for reptiles as it does for mammals. Their action on the reptile body tends to be very much slower and you need very often much greater doses to produce the same sort of effect. Well, I shall attempt to inject it in several sites. They do feel pain. I still feel bad about inflicting pain, even if I know that it's necessary. It takes a lot longer for the drug to take effect in reptiles as well. In the meantime, Dr. Lambrus plans the procedure. Even though the surgery is for a reptile, Dr. Lambrus prepares a sterile environment with the same care as if it were a human about to undergo a procedure. Biggest danger to the patient is infection. A lack of specialist equipment means that Dr. Lambrus has had to improvise and fashion his own. skin is pretty tough. Now the thing is to pick up body wall without any underlying tissues or organs. Here is the urinary bladder. This. The bladder needs to be drained. It's something that needs to be done slowly and gently though because sudden decompression is not a good idea. He then removes the colon blockage he saw on the x-ray earlier. The blockage 
inappropriate environmental conditions causing constipation, either the wrong kind of food or too much of the right kind of food. But something else appears to be irregular. And the amount of fluid we've got here is actually pretty amazing. I can't say I'm terribly happy. And here is very, very bad news indeed. Here is a large chunk of malignancy. You can see this obviously cancerous mass extending down into the depths of the body cavity compared to normal intestine. Where we have cancer like this, we might well remove most of the primary growth, but there are almost certainly secondaries elsewhere. I'm afraid not very really good news. Unfortunately, um, it is a widespread cancer of the colon. This is one of those cases that is genuinely inoperable. So um, you're telling me you want me to put him down. I've never yet been able to get over the distress of this sort of thing. I suppose when I start caring is when I quit the practice of medicine, but it's, it's heartbreaking. The only thing we can do now is at least put an end to his suffering. The essential principle of medicine is save life where you can, alleviate suffering where you can't save life. And here, unfortunately, we couldn't save life. It was simply a matter of alleviating suffering by um, euthanasia on the operating table. It may seem silly to you, but I we'll always do that. Do I feel that I'm doing anything useful? In a limited way, yes. I can treat animals that are in need of attention, and more importantly, I spend a great deal of time treating the owners. In other words, educating them teaching them as much as I can about the biology of whatever species of animal they're keeping. You basically treat the whole family, animal plus owners.